Hey, Edith. Hola, Christy. I repurposed some lumber. You did? Yeah, it was exciting. What? <laughs> it was exciting or exciting. Oh, siding. Yes, exciting. Oh, that is hilarious. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips. A fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. Hello, everybody. Hi, folks out there. Hello, gardeners and wannabe gardeners and people who thought that this might have been a Stranger Things podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Although we are Stranger Things. We've been called a little strange. So we're with you there. And hello to you, Edith. Christy, I have said hello to you from this chair 60 times. Our 60th episode. Our 60... I never, ever, <laughs> ever... <laughs> thought we'd get past like 20. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's really cool that yeah. we get to sit here and talk about how much we love gardening and encourage gardening and um, yeah. and people like to listen to us. Well, I hope they do. Sure. <laughs> Learn of something, course. have a laugh or two. Yes. Groan at some bad puns. In fact, we we have people that like us so much, they're like our patrons. Let's give a shout out, please, to Liesl B., from Littleton, Colorado, she has become a member of our garden party, and that means she throws a couple bucks our way a month to help support the work that we do, and in exchange, she's going to get some seeds from our garden. Hey, Christy, I want to tell people that I have been really assiduously collecting seeds for any new patrons we might get. Me too. So they're going to be fresh, beautiful 2021 seeds. So it, it it's a, it's like a gift to you, everybody. And if folks, if you are interested in becoming a member of all the, where all the cool kids are at the garden party, <laughs> then just co go to UpsideDownTulips.com or there's a link in the show notes. Now, you guys are cool. I thought she meant us because we are so not cool. <laughs> no, we're not. That's what I thought. Okay. And, you know, if you're at a certain level, Edith, yes. in the garden party, folks get a coffee mug. Oh, my. A coffee mug. Yes. That's $10 a month or more. And um, we it's also a pretty have, mug. It's a really pretty mug. It is a good mug. And we have other types of merch. If you want to click on the link in our show notes, you can also find a link to all sorts of wonderful merch that has a tulip on it. You can surround your life, your whole environment with nothing but tulips. We can do that for you. So here's what happened to my upside down tulips mug today. What happened? Did you so lose you it have, again? Huh? Did you lose it again? No, I did not lose it. What did you do? So you have, I have this kitchen cupboard that has all the coffee mugs in it. And sometimes you have like a mug on top of a mug on top yes. of a mug. It's kind of this mishmash of mm -hmm. different types of mugs. It's like the tower of mugs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And I grabbed a mug out this morning and I filled it with coffee, and then I'm leaving the kitchen. And then all of a sudden, I heard behind me this tink. And I looked behind me, and I saw the upside-down tulips mug fall out of my cupboard. Oh. It hit the coffee maker. It hit the counter. It bounced off and went onto the floor. Uh-huh. And I'll be darned if that thing did not break. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's a high-quality mug we got going here. <laughs> okay. That's pretty impressive. That's very impressive indeed. I'm glad you didn't wreck it. I'm glad that you didn't, because then what would you have done with it, right? Would you have tried to recycle it? I would have repurposed it. You would have repurposed it, because I have news about recycling. You know the triangular chasing arrows little symbol? Did you know? I did not know. If that symbol is there, but it doesn't have a number in the middle... That's just the company fooling us. Oh, clever. Isn't that seriously? The same way when people say, this is gluten-free, and they're talking about like gum. Well, of course yeah. it's gluten-free. But this is way more serious Sneaky. than that. Yeah. This, this, is, this is false advertising. California has actually taken the steps. It's the first state to say, that's illegal. You can't do that anymore. 
Yeah, because wouldn't that, if you're recycling and you put it in recycling and it goes out, wouldn't that muck up also the recycling centers? Yes, that's what we kept we keep being told. And we here in Wheat Ridge, we pay for recycling. I pay to have it recycled. And I got to tell you, I have this horrible feeling that they're just taking it to the landfill. I really seriously do. Because nobody wants it anymore. China's not buying it. Remember years ago when uh, the governor of New Mexico said that it's a scam? Mm. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And he was shouted down by everybody. You know, he might have been right. Mm. So anyway, Gavin Newsom, the governor there, has until October 10th to sign this into law. And thank goodness. Keep us updated when he does that. I will. Very apropos, since this week we're talking about repurposing things for the garden, household objects or other things, upcycling, recycling things that you can use in the Mm -hmm. garden. Thanks for that, Edith. So listen, how is your garden? Well, Edith, um, I finally got out there, which is great. Good. My play opened up the lifespan of a fact at Uh Curious Theater Company. Uh I wore heels for the first time in a year and a half. Very good. And a dress. Thank you I for coming. You just, well, I thought you weren't just short. Yeah. I thought, look at her. <laughs> She's so proud. She's getting taller. And so it was great to finally have the time to get out in there. A big thing I've been doing is, interesting you should mention this, is collecting seeds. Oh, good. It's a great time of year to do it, folks, because you want the, the seed heads to be very dry. And so because I haven't been out there very mm-hmm. much, I have a mm-hmm. lot of dry sea heads. I've been, and this is for all future garden party members, who, uh, I have echinacea. So that's a purple cone flower. Mm-hmm. You can make tea out of it. It's supposed to be like a home holistic mm-hmm. remedy. From the root. Plus it's pretty. Yeah, it is very pretty. It attracts a lot of bees. Cosmos, of course, Edith. Mm-hmm. I bet you've been collecting a lot of cosmos I seeds. I have indeed. Uh, black-eyed Susans. I've been collecting those seeds. And... Mm-hmm. Hollyhocks. I've got marigolds and morning glories. One seed I'm really excited about is called the Carthusian pink. And you've admired this in my yard this summer, yes. Edith. This is the one that has a magenta flower on a very tall stem that's maybe like three feet high. Yeah, it's really pretty. And it is named after an order of monks that dates back to the 11th century. And it's very good in dry areas. So, so if folks, if you're looking for something a bit more xeriscapic, things that go well in prairie lands, it's excellent for that. Oh, Christy, what about your African marigolds? I only have French marigolds. Your African ma- marigolds are feet high. I've been saving seeds for those too. Oh, good. So people have a choice between marigolds if they like. Oh, nice. Good. I also discovered a new tomato recipe. Okay, what is it? This is for everybody who has a lot of cherry tomatoes coming in and not knowing what to do with them. It's a roasted salsa. Ooh, that sounds good. So it's two cups of cherry tomatoes, eight cloves of garlic, Mm. an onion, three jalapenos, and you roast that on aluminum foil at 350 for 10 minutes, turning your tray at every five minutes. Then you throw that in your blender with cilantro, lime juice, oregano, cumin, salt, and pepper. That sounds really good. It's fantastic. Oh, you made it? I made it, yeah. And did you give me any yet? No? (laughs) Why? (laughs) I tell you what, after this, we'll go upstairs and we'll try some. I'll have you try it because it's, there's something like eight cloves of garlic. I go, whoa, that's a lot of garlic. And you know, last week we talked about how much we love garlic. But because you roast it, yeah, it mellows the flavor out. Right. So hey, great. hey, you know how you were talking about drying the cherry tomatoes, and and uh-huh. I saw online today that some people like put them in the oven at two hundred all night. Mm-hmm. Then I read this woman. This is the coolest thing I think. She says, "I dry my cherry tomatoes in my car." LOL. I cut them in half. Salt them and place them in a pie pan, depending on how hot the day is. In a day or two, I have perfectly dried tomatoes. That's perfect. Without using one ounce of energy. I love that. That's Isn't that great, great? That's a great idea. It's a wonderful idea. Do you know when I was on the road as a comic, one time I got to the condo first, and this other comic comes, and he comes in, he brings in his uh, suitcase. And then he goes, oh, I got to get my dinner. And he goes out. Like two seconds later, he was back with this thing in a um, aluminum foil. And I go, what, where'd you get that? It was, oh, 
Well, you know, when I left Omaha, I took the salmon, I wrapped it in aluminum foil, I put it in the engine of my car, knowing that (laughs) when I got here, it'll be perfect. That's how he lived. Wow. So everywhere he ended up, like if it was an eight-hour drive, it Uh would be perfect. Isn't that funny? Engine food. Engine food and so clever. (laughs) So clever. Hey, Edith, how's your garden going? Christy, my cauliflower, one of them is an inch and a half across. Oh, thank goodness. Christy, it doesn't have time to get much bigger, does it? I don't know. The temperatures are looking really great for the next few weeks. Well, they are. My zucchini is so puny right now, that zucchini plant I planted in oh. July. So let's see if between your cauliflower and my zucchini, if we 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 bring in the world's smallest zucchini and cauliflowers. <laughs> be like yeah. that tiny that food movement. That would be hilarious, huh? the tiny yeah. food movement. I planted spinach and lettuce on the first day of fall. Excellent. Hoping it'll overwinter. I'm yes, going, happy fall. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to mulch it with my dried corn stalks. I've cut them up in pieces. Mm, and I'm going to mulch it with that. I, I thought, why that. not? And my plum tree is officially dead. Uh, and for $7, the CSU, Colorado State University Extension, uh-huh, uh-huh. right, right. Um, they took samples that I brought in and they put it in cultures. And they grew the cultures to see if it was a fungus or a spore it was neither. It was not that. It was not lack of water. It was not bad planting. It was not insects. It was the weather. It was the weather. We had those freak freezes that yeah. were too early and too late for several years yes. in a row. And it was a re- it was a young tree. So it and, and it had one part where it was damaged in the bark, and it just couldn't withstand it mm-hmm. because then we had that. Cold, rainy May. Yeah. And then it got into the 90s. I think more days than we've ever had. And it also might have been strained by, remember, Edith, last September, we had snow in the yeah. early September. Yeah. And then we had that freak late spring snow mm-hmm. that hurt all the blossoms and everything. Yeah. I want to mention how uh, I want to encourage people to plant a tree of, of any kind. Yeah. But a fruit tree. I mean, it's so much more than you just getting fruit. The The way I put my peach tree, which is very still healthy, thank goodness, I put it so that it is between the setting sun and my kitchen window, so it shades it. Mm. When the peaches are ripe, they fall down feeding bees. I saw, oh, I don't know, 30 bees eating on it today. Wonderful. It feeds birds. It feeds bees. It feeds us. It fed me. Because, Edith, I you gave me a bunch of peaches last week, and I made peach cobbler out of it, uh-huh. and then I froze all the rest. And you know what I was hoping when I gave you peaches? That you would give me salsa. But that didn't work out, did it? How do you know? <laughs> Boy, you just, you have no patience. <laughs> oh, my God. You, I, I, you're right. I have absolutely <laughs> no patience. So I saw suckers still coming out. Uh-huh. So I wondered if I could cut the tree down. And then train one of the suckers to go into a tree. That's a great idea. Except I asked the Jeffco Master Gardener Fruit Tree team about it. This is interesting, Christy. Here's what they said. The suckers would grow and could be pruned into an acceptably shaped tree. However, the tree would be whatever root stock was used rather than the plum you had selected. Oh, so you know what? That's just like roses. Yes. They're just like, so it wouldn't be true. You know, it's just time to get a... A new plum tree. And mm-hmm. there are a lot of sales right now, Edith. And it's a great time to plant a tree. It is. Thank you. Did you, did you cut it down or did you? I'm going to as soon as I find a chainsaw. Okay. Something well, to cut it down with. Goodbye, yeah. plum tree. And I'm sorry to say, Edith, that you are just plum out, out of, of luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had to do that, folks. And she, she Maybe it made up for that really awful joke she told at the top of the show. Okay, folks, please check out our website for the funny and informative Upside Down Dictionary. Just go to UpsideDownTulips.com. Or click on the link in our show notes. We also got some fun stuff for you to check out on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and on our YouTube channel. And now here's one of our brand new pod plays based on one of our favorite movies. I'm so sorry, Red. I'm so sorry for everything. You're such a child, Scarlet. You think that by saying I'm sorry, all the past will be corrected. Oh, Rhett, it was a mistake. I wasn't paying attention, and before I knew it, the whole garden had gone to seed. 
I'll fix it, Rhett, I will. How, Scarlet? The seeds are gone. They're gone with the wind. You know I love that garden, Rhett. Here, take my handkerchief. Never in any crisis of your life have I known you to have a handkerchief. Where are you going? I want to see if somewhere there's a garden that's well tended, full of charm and grace. Please don't go. You're the best gardener I know. I love you. That's your misfortune. Where shall I go? What shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I can't let him go, I can't. There must be a way to bring him back. Oh, I know. Rhett, wait! Okay, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Yes. With... Our gun with the wind parody. You know, um, I, when I was look when I was thinking about it, I looked up that last scene, and a woman had written in the notes. You know how people write little comments, and they go, "I know they get back together." This woman was so invested in this movie; she so wanted those. <laughs> Isn't that something? You know, I kind of like it that they don't get back together. Well, we'll see what happens in our version. That's right. Well, this week we're talking about repurposing for the garden or upcycling or recycling stuff or taking stuff and using it for what it was not meant to be used, but what is perfectly fine to use. Excellent. Do you know why, Christy? Why? Because we want to be pioneers. Right? That makes sense. It's very American, isn't it? It is. I mean, you couldn't go to the hardware store and just buy stuff. You had to make stuff or use stuff you had. And it feels good to do that. I have a... I hate waste. Me too. And I think it's probably because growing up, you know, very frugally, Mm -hmm. I remember that we would wash out aluminum foil, Mm -hmm. really good freezer bags. We did too. We did all. I still do those things. I still do those things. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, And even my handsome and handy husband will have to like beg me to throw away a piece of aluminum foil. I think he sneaks it away and throws it away and recycles it without me looking. I'll bet he does, <laughs> I'll, or just tosses it over his shoulder. Yeah, it's nice. It's it's you know it's, it's, it's for those who hate waste. Just wanted to buy like a compost pile because if anything in the garden doesn't work, I go well. Mm-hmm. At least it's going in the compost pile. Exactly. I mean, at my house, we didn't have a lot of talk about sin and brim, brimstone, limestone, hell, and stuff. But m- my parents always said wasting food is a sin. Mm. That was like the number that was like pounded into me from the time I was a kid. Yeah, my hips feel that. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny, and I don't know why. (laughs) I don't even know why. Well, and if you want to, you know, preempt things from going to the landfill, if you want to excite your creativity and use your imagination. And save money. And save money, then let's repurpose some stuff. Uh, First of all, let's talk about repurposing some objects so that we can collect seeds and see, and start seeds. Okay, good idea. Um, I save all of my um, like glass jars, all of my spice jars, all my prescriptions, um, all that stuff for seeds. And it's a better way to save seeds. Yes, it is. I save seeds the stupid way in sandwich baggies, which I probably shouldn't be doing. Because I, I bet it wouldn't... Re- I don't know. It, it couldn't get moist in there because right. it's in plastic. Yeah, yeah. Do, but do you put those good. little deoxidizers in it? Yes, uh-huh. That's good. Okay. That's another thing we're repurposing is deoxidizers. That- and these are these little things that you get in your and when you buy a new purse. <laughs> a new purse, dog food. Yeah. It, it's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you also save toilet paper rolls, don't you, Edith? I do save toilet paper rolls. You can use them for, you know, other than a very nice chunky necklace. <laughs> <laughs> You paint it. Yeah, I'm Turkey seeing necklace. this. Yeah. You can um, use that. You can make a little uh, seed starter cup out of them. Yeah. Here right? are the steps for it. Oh, good. You cut the toilet paper roll in half and you make four cuts in the roll, one third of the way up. You fold the bottom like you would close a box. And then you fill it up with light potting soil, pack it down with your thumb plant your seeds, and water it. And then when your seeds have sprouted and hardened off, you can plant the whole thing directly in the soil. What I do, just just depending on Mm -hmm. how soft your soil is, sometimes I take the bottom off. I'll just cut the bottom off so that the roots can have Mm -hmm. a free, That's true. You can unfold the... 
Or you can unfold. The little box part. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're part. saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. See? Mm-hmm. What do you do with yogurt packs, Edith? I use them to start seeds as well. Like if I, like for example, a, um, a squash seed is going to have a bigger plant. And they mm. can get pretty big. So it's nice to use something that's not really small. Like I think that would be a little bit hard to put that in a little toilet paper roll. Yeah. Right? And do you just poke holes in the bottom? Thank you. Yes. Poking holes in the bottom because not they're not made out of paper. So you have to poke little holes in the bottom. Yes, you do. Oh, Lisa also mentioned the toilet roll as a cut worm detractor. Yes. To collar plants because we are fooling the stupid cut worm. Got to be smarter than the cutworm, as you say. And then you have to be that smart. You just have to be smarter than a cutworm. That's right. That's all you need. Right, because a cutworm comes in below the soil surface Uh and will cut away at the very start of the plant, which you can't see. You don't know it's there. Right. But if you have a toilet paper roll and you have it wrapped around there, it'll bump its head up against it and go someplace else. Yeah. It's great for tomatoes. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Um, Now, Egg cartons, you uh-huh. can use them for starter pots, right? And for that, um, they're little, right? So they're little, but you can just like, I put an X on the bottom before when I plant it so that again, the roots can you, find you their cu- way Do out. you cut an X, you mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you break the little egg parts out or do you do it all together while it's in the I do it dozen? all together because it's easier to pick it up and... Mm-hmm. You know, and if you're in the beginning days before the seeds get, before the seedlings get really big, you know, you can cover it so they think they're in a little house. That's smart. Like an apartment building. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's cute. A high end. Do you, uh-huh. can you, do you, do you use the plastic, the styrofoam ones no, and the cardboard no, 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 ones? No, no, just no, the no, cardboard. Yeah. Okay. I, I am, I'm totally over plastic. I'm totally over styrofoam. I don't use any of that stuff anymore. Except for milk jugs. For winter sewing. Yes. In fact, a friend of mine just said, I have some milk jugs. Do you want some? I got about a dozen. I said, oh, yes. Wow. Um, So I will use milk jugs for winter sewing, which I think is at episode 25, Edith. Take out Mm -hmm. your jugs and learn how to winter sew. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different ways you can winter sew. I prefer milk jugs. And that is cutting them in half, but leaving a hinge, Mm -hmm. throwing the top away, poking holes in it, putting... Light potting soil, seed starting mix is the best. And sowing your seeds in the winter, no matter what zone you are in, even to our friends in Alaska, even to our friends who are two people who have listened in Russia. We have people in Russia? Yeah. Oh, you didn't tell me. That's exciting. So even those people can winter sow, and we'll probably do another episode of it this coming January, but if yeah. you're interested now, just check yeah. out that episode. But milk, And it's not just a milk jug. It also can be a water jug or an orange juice jug yep. or something that's that sort of light plastic opaque. What about a vinegar jug? I, I've been saving yeah, vinegar absolutely. jugs. Yeah, okay. that'll work. Because they're kind of heavy, they but... Are. I also figure that'll keep it kind of warm. As long as light can go through. Listen, I spoke too soon. There's another, there's one other plastic thing that I use, which is, you know, those clamshell, plastic clamshell things? Yes. Like uh, you you go out to dinner and they give you that piece back. Yes. You go to the produce department and these days everything is in plastic. You get one cupcake and one of those clamshell things. Yes. Anyway. Um, there's two ways that I use the clamshells. One is I can fill it with soil and poke some holes in the bottom and I can plant something like lettuce that, that you can, they can all live together nicely. Mm -hmm. Or I can take any of these little seed starting ways, you know, yogurt or whatever. And I put that in there like it's a house and then I can close it at night. So if I have six of them in there, because I leave them out on my porch in the day, and I bring them in in the night. And it just makes it easier smart, work-wise. And just think of all the money that that saved. You don't have to go out, folks, and buy a real expensive seed-starting kit. No. That has all that stuff with it. You can just use stuff you already have in your own house. They're really charging a lot of money now that people like to garden. Now they're mm-hmm. charging more money than ever. So you don't need hardly any of that fancy save stuff. Save money and makes yourself feel good. Yeah. Well, when we come back, we'll talk more about... Uh, repurposing to water your garden, um, how to do soil improvement. Ooh, lots of fun ways about planters and containers. Yes, you could be an artist in your garden. Turn it into an artistic endeavor. 
Let's check back in with Rhett and Scarlet. Scarlet! <laughs> I can't let him go, I can't. There must be a way to bring him back. Oh, I know. Rhett, wait. This Brandywine heirloom tomato has been wrapping on the counter for a week. I saved it for you. It's so red. It is so red. It's scarlet. Take a bite. All right. Oh, that is the best tomato I've ever tasted. So juicy. I grew that, Rhett. I grew that for you. And there's more of them, wrapped in newspaper and wrapping as we speak. You see, I've been listening to this podcast called Upside Down Tulips, and their motto is, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Maybe, Scarlet. Just maybe. I can forgive you too, and we can make a go of it. Oh, Rhett, I know we can. And we'll keep right on gardening. As God is my witness, we'll keep gardening and we'll never be hungry again. Oh, I love you, Scarlet. Look, Red. There's a staircase right behind us and I think you know what to do with the staircase. Slide down the banister? No. Pick me up and take me upstairs. Then we'll slide down the banister together. If the garden can forgive you, so will I. Oh! I think you've put on weight, Scarlet. No, I have not. Maybe you've just gotten weak and a little flabby. But I love you anyway. I love you too, Scarlet. Maybe we could just walk up the stairs. Of course we can. First one to the top and down the banister gets the next ripe tomato. Oh, you're on. Scarlet. <laughs> Grow something. It solves more problems than you can imagine. So, Christy, it did end happily. Yes. And, and I did it, you know, kind of for that woman on, on, on the internet, that strange, not strange woman, stranger <laughs> woman. Well, maybe strange should be that invested in, you know, fictional characters, but whatever. Um, I wanted to have a happy ending. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, watering. Yeah, here are some ways that you can repurpose some household items to help water your garden. A common way is with the two-liter soda bottle. If you take the cap and you throw it away, you take... You don't actually throw it? Yeah, you have to. They won't recycle it. Sorry, go ahead. They won't recycle it. You cut off the bottom and then you bury part of the two liter bottle next to a plant and then you can water your plant through that and save and it'll slowly drip into it wait so you said cut out the bottom Uh did you mean cut out the whole bottom of the of the um liter of the bottle to cut out the whole bottom turn it upside down so that the top is in the ground about a quarter of the way oh i get it i didn't hear that upside down part okay yeah Okay, good, good, good. And then you can use that as a way to really get water directly into the plant. And it goes lower. It'll go lower so you won't have splashing on your plant. And also you can fill it up and then walk away from it, you know? Well, let me just remind, episode number one, 59 (laughs) episodes ago, this was one of my mistakes. And I see now that I really did it wrong because I, Christy, I didn't do it like that. I didn't turn it upside down. I left it right side up. I didn't poke enough holes in it, and I didn't plant it deeply enough, so it stuck out of the ground, and I tripped over it for years, all of them. (laughs) So I just did everything wrong. (laughs) Well, you know, you're you're living the brand, Edith. Yeah, I am. Uh, You can also turn a old garbage can into a rain barrel. Yeah, they sell those faucets. Which you gave me, which is still sitting in my garage, but all I need to do now, because I have an old garbage can, so next year I'm going to do that, is, and there's lots of different ways to make that faucet and hook it up to make it become a rain barrel. Just make sure that it is a good a good garbage can, because the garbage cans I have, I guess, were not, you know, ultra good, because 
they already have um, leaks in them. Oh, gotcha. Because, you know, water is really, really heavy. That's a good point. Yeah, so make sure it's a really sturdy, sturdy thing. And make sure that you put really large holes at the top so you get a lot of rain in there. And um, you have another hole on the side for drainage overflow. Mm-hmm. And um, attach a screen cover so you don't get mosquitoes laying or, eggs in or, there. Or, you know what I do? I just use uh, storage bins, and I go out with a stick, and I stir them around once a day if they're full, because that never occurred mm-hmm. to me to use the um, screen. <laughs> That's right. You collect water with old kitty litter I use everything. Right? I have buckets used for making poop tea. And um, all kinds of fertilizers. You can make fertilizers out of weed leaves. As long. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, eventually, someday, these containers actually do go into the landfill, unfortunately. But look at all the use they're getting. Look how much yeah. preventing it going into the landfill yeah. it and, is. Because it, it can take 50 to 500 years for plastic to totally break down. And once it does, it's in the soil and we're eating it. So that's not good either. Yeah. You know? And the other really good thing about reusing things is you don't have to go out and buy new stuff, not just for saving money, but for just kind of getting out of the consumer cycle. Yeah. Always we got to have new stuff. We got to have stuff. Uh, Tell folks what you do with old garden tools when it comes to watering, Edith. Well, I go to uh, garage sales and a lot of times people sell really old tools. Like uh, you can't hardly hold on to them anymore because they're splintery. So I use them for hose guides, for one thing. I will, a handle of a pitchfork, I will pound it into the ground with a hammer. Um, That's so clever. I And you know the pitchfork itself, the steel part? I will put that around and use that as a border or to hold up a, a, a tomato plant or, oh, or anything like clever. that. Oh, how clever. You know? Well, thank you. It, um... It, it it's it's kind of cool. It, it seems like cool. it'd be a great thing to do too with like an old, you know, an old trowel too. You could take an old yes. trowel and just throw it in there. And oh my gosh, yes, you can have it there, and then you're marking the beginning of a row, mm-hmm. beginning and end of a row. So you never have to throw these tools away, and they're not plastic, so they're not going to mm-hmm. degrade into your soil. Mm-hmm. They're in fact going to add iron. It's a win-win. A couple weeks ago, we talked about extending your season. We both talked about cold frames. Yeah. And how we both said we wish we had coal frames, but yes. we don't have a coal frame. No. However, a coal frame is one of the most popular ways to repurpose old windows. Yep. It's a that's a, it's just a great idea and it's really simple to make. I'm not a carpenter. I'm not I just haven't made one. But yeah, they're easy. You need lumber, you need old windows, mm-hmm. you need hinges. That's all you need, isn't it? And it should be higher at one end and lower at the other. Yes. Yeah. And a stick to keep to keep it up in the day and to close it at night. And you said something about using pallets for compost bins? When we first moved into our house, our compost bins were made out of old wooden pallets. There's a whole side industry of things that people make out of pallets, which it just, it humbles me, the creativity that's out there. Wow. But a real simple thing is just to take one, two, three, four, five pallets, and you could have two compost bins. Christy, I've seen them for free in the alleys. You know what I mean? Yeah. People just lay them out and they put a sign there that says free. And I think the ones that we had probably lasted, were probably there for like 15 years. Finally, they degraded. And uh-huh. then my handsome and handy husband made me really beautiful compost bins. You have the best compost <laughs> bin ever. The envy of all the ladies on the block. Yes, it is. If you still get a newspaper that you can hold in your hand, all two of you and me, me and two people in the whole country, (laughs) you can use, they are so useful for so many things. For example, um, if you want to kill off some weeds, if you want to kill your grass, if you want to plant, if you want to have a container, a clay pot, and you know how hot the plant gets inside of that, Mm -hmm. I put it inside of a bigger plastic and I... The, the area between the two pots, I put crumpled newspaper in. Oh. So then when you water, you water the newspaper, that keeps it cool. Oh, wow. And it, it insulates. That is so clever. Oh, thank you. You can thank also you. use newspaper to make um, seedling pots. Oh, my gosh. That is so clever. 
there's a there's a wooden dowel or wooden tool that you can yeah. get that it will be like the mold for newspaper so that you can make a little pot out of newspaper and then fill it with soil. And then when the seedlings happen and they're hardened off, you can just plant the whole thing. You know what else you can do? What? You can make sailor hats and airplanes. <laughs> Here's another thing that newspaper is really good for, by the way. Is that you know how in the spring in the compost pile, mainly more in the summer when everything is green. Yeah. So you've got long clippings and green clippings and yes. and you know, a good compost pile is a mixture of of the green and quote unquote the brown. Yes. New shredded newspaper can be the brown leaves that you run out of in the in the middle of summer. Oh my gosh, good point, Christy. Yes, yes it can. Um what about Planters and containers. Okay. Yeah, this is where people really can use their artistry, isn't uh-huh. it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Become a Monet of your mm-hmm. own garden. You use wooden wine boxes, don't you? I do use wooden wine boxes, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can paint them. You can drill holes in them. And they're, it's nice to have square things sometimes, too. My gosh, I've seen people use boots. They'll paint the boots. I love that. Like Wellingtons. It, yes, and they hang it on the fence. It looks so pretty. Toilets. Sinks. Sinks. Uh, what about an old wheelbarrow? Yes. Bathtubs. Clawfoot bathtubs. I've seen people do beautiful things with them. Tires. Beautiful. Tires. I also like old drawers. Oh, And I yeah. actually have some up in my attic because when we model the kitchen, I saved them for some reason. I've seen people take old drawers. You can actually put like um, like a chair. Um, chair. Um, um, sounds like a uh, hair, bear, <laughs> a chair, fair. What? Just to give it a stand, like legs, you know, chair legs. Legs, 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 legs. Give it to, put, put chair legs on it so you can lift it up and have this little drawer with pretty hardware on it. I've seen people paint tin cans, paint Ooh, cans, poke yeah. holes in it. Yeah. I also, hmm. a side note regarding um, repurposing and recycling uh-huh. for containers uh-huh. is don't forget, if you have a really big container, you don't need to fill that whole thing up with soil Mm-mm. and have it be heavy and hard to move around. Fill half of it up with popcorn peanuts. Or or leaves and paper, mm-hmm. as I do. You, you, you can do It'll that. It'll be lighter. Yeah, lighter to pick up and stuff. Um, yeah. I've also seen people make really pretty upcycled, recycled garden markers. How do they do like a wooden spoon. So they'll paint a wooden spoon oh, and yeah. you'll put down what the herbs are or what the vegetable is. Oh, that's and you'll a nice paint idea. it on there. I've seen people do that with paint sticks. You can get all this stuff, folks. Most of this stuff at a thrift store, which means mm-hmm. that you're helping not only the people that work at the thrift store because they always go for mm-hmm. a, some kind of a charity, but you're helping yourself as well. The best one, of course, is the, the, the um, garden marker that's made out of wine corks. And shish kebab skewers. <laughs> I've had uh, yeah. a few. I've had a few extra wine corks in my day. Have you? <laughs> I have. You know those old milk crates. Uh huh. Um, that is the absolute perfect height. I put a kneeling pad on it, and I sit on it to weed, so I don't have to kneel and hurt my knees all the time. That's I've used them lovely. For years. It's. Yeah, it works really well. Well, folks, we probably just only dented all the different things that one could repurpose. If you have things that you've repurposed or upcycled, oh, please tell us about it. Oh, do. Like Send you, us pictures. You could actually write to us in any way that you wanted. Hey, Christy, you know what time it is? What time is it, Edith? It's ding dong. Ring, ring. I'm sorry. Mailbag time. <laughs> ring, ring. <laughs> I'm such a ding dong. <laughs> This week's letter is from Diane from Denver. I love this letter. She says, about a hundred years ago, when I was younger, thinner, and cuter, (laughs) Diane, I lived on a busy street. It was summer, and I was watering roses in the front yard. I pulled on the hose because it was stuck. I pulled really hard, so hard that I pulled it off the faucet and fell backwards on my butt. At that exact moment, a pickup truck full of young guys drove past. They hooted and hollered and clapped. That's my story. Oh, wonderful. Christy, you had a great story about that re- I was gonna watering say that, the roses, that, didn't you? Well, that reminds me when I was I was weeding out in the front That's yard weeding. with my backside fully exposed as a jogger went by. And I kind of apologized to her saying, sorry about that. And as she said, no problem. And as she jogged away, she said, you should own it. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Diane owned it, didn't she? Thanks, yeah. Diane. Thank you for Thank that you. letter. And I like stories that are like that, you know, good memories of being in the garden. And folks, if you have one like that, mm-hmm. if you have uh, stories about repurposing or recycling for your garden, mm-hmm. your successes, your flops, or you maybe, wanna... you, maybe you just want to say something nice to us. How about that? Sure. You could even be nasty. We don't care. No, I don't want nasty. I do. You do? Okay, well, you just said they just to Dear Edith. If we get a nasty letter, we will read it and we will comment upon it like adults, Christy. Okay, okay, fine. Where should people send these really mean letters to Edith? (laughs) Well, they could try Upside Down Tulips at Gmail, couldn't they? Or at our website at UpsideDownTulips.com. Or check out the show notes. Good job. Hey, it's that special time in our podcast. And where did that piano come from? It's inspiration. This week's inspiration comes from Mary Ann Evans, also known by her pen name, George Eliot, one of the leading writers of the Victorian era. Delicious autumn, my very soul is wedded to it. And if I were a bird, I would fly about the earth seeking the successive autumns. I feel like I would do that, too, if I had... I love autumn. I I love it, too. I love it. Bring on the pumpkin spice and the apple cider and the warmth yep. and the sweaters. Yep. Or just the smell of an orchard as... Oh, love autumn so much. Enjoy the first week of fall, everybody. And thank you for listening. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. If you got some laughs and some value out of this week's episode, could you do us a favor? You could subscribe, like, or follow us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thank you so much to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. You want to hear more of her music? Well, go to her website, denisegentilini.com, or find that link where? At UpsideDownTulips.com. Thank you to our kind and very talented friend, Zachary Andrews. And thank you to our excellent yet elusive engineer. And a special thanks to our local nursery and friend of the show, Southwest Gardens. Join us next week for garden to freezer to canning to all the things that you can do. And don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Upside down.